I'm Kyle Dixon. And I'm Michael Stein. We do music. We've done a show called Stranger Things. We're going to talk a little bit about what we do and how we do it. When we first uh, approached to do the music for Stranger Things, it was a very exciting random email from the directors, just kind of telling us they liked the music of our band. They had been using it in a mock trailer for the show. They sent us the trailer that had one of our songs called Dirge. It's the last track on our first LP. And they decided who was going to do the score to this TV show we're going to work on. Let's ask these guys who were using their music currently. Basically, they just wanted to know if we had any interest in being a part of a sci-fi drama with Winona Ryder on Netflix. We wrote him back saying, of course we're <laughs> interested in doing this. Here's a bunch of music. When you make stuff conceptually for like a library or just stuff that you think sounds cinematic, actually seeing that stuff fit to picture, almost all the music we submitted from the library is not stuff that crossed over being able to be used in the show. The things that are effective in score are generally a, a lot different than a pop song. And I'm using the term pop song like pretty loosely. Structured. This many bars, A, B, A, B, C, which is not how score is. Score is like, what is this thing? And now, and then it's like, oh, and then it's like cute. And then it's like, this <laughs> yeah. music's super weird. It's almost like, it's like it's, some form of it's abstract like schizophrenia, prog. yeah. But it works yeah. to picture. We have tons of influences. I mean, we, <laughs> we grew up listening to Apex Twin, Autechre, and Bogdan Rzynski. All the experimental side of pop electronic stuff. I probably watched Big Trouble in Little China a hundred thousand times. The Keep, which Tangerine Dream did the score to this early Michael Mann film. The music in that movie is incredible. Ex Machina was really cool. Same with Annihilation. I don't think as an artist you can try to ignore or act like you're not influenced by stuff. but all art takes things and you absorb it and adapt it and it becomes some new thing. Everything evolves from things you've experienced. When we approach music, we obviously have all the influences and inspirations, but you get in the studio and you experiment, and that's where we come from. So it's always about finding new things and that's what keeps me excited. It's very fun to, to make your own sounds and in, in doing that, you're going to create something that's more unique to yourself. When you're using things like modular synths, it's even hard for you to recreate the same sound twice. So in that way, it's unique even to that specific session. Season one allowed us to approach some of the horror, like the mysterious scenes where like, Nancy's going to look for bar out in the woods and there's these cooler experimental ambient pieces of music. I just think are, are really unique. The jump scare sound was actually a combination of a broken piano we recorded on a field recorder the first time we visited the set. When Mike and Dustin are being chased to the quarry by the bullies and then Eleven saves them is one of the themes from season one that got reused and reinterpreted. This actually got reused when Joyce was axing through the wall. The end of episode eight, it starts when Eleven comes back and then goes through the credits and kind of plays out the more epic version of that. We defined like a handful of themes early on in, in Stranger Things because there's definitely different little worlds that exist and there's different characters. So there's some specific themes and then just kind of general moods and sonic soundscapes that represent different parts of the show that creates rules and boundaries you can work within. One of the challenges for us was to figure out how we were gonna do action music in our own way. We did that with the use of just kind of atonal percussive elements with like a brooding kind of bass underneath it. When Steve is trying to lure the demo dogs, it goes through just a lot of like ambient, kind of eerie, suspenseful stuff. It'll build to a big rise and then drop in, like have a jump scare. 
because of the action, the higher energy stuff. We got to revisit a little more of the themes of where we come from with the band, stuff with drums. Just these bigger, more epic pieces that dr are driving. We've made music in just about every way that you could possibly make music. We've made music together. We've made entire pieces separately. We've, we've started sessions. an idea, sent it over to him, had him work on it, sent it back to me. We've done the back and forth thing. Yeah. We've done just about every combination of collaboration that exists. We're fortunate we've been working together so long that basically we're able to create music that we know could come from either of us. This better be good, stalker. So this is my workspace with most of my equipment. I guess you guys wanted to know a bit about the theme song. Misconception, everyone thinks that the little arpeggio was written on a Juno, which I don't even own. And it wasn't an arpeggio, it was played by hand. And it was this guy. That's doing the main sequence. This is what played the bass line, it's a SH2, very good, aggressive kind of bass line. Doing a little self-resonating filter. Did the heartbeat. The uh, heartbeat, the like thump, the thump, the thump. Prophet like, Five is in there doing some kind of like a, a little, pad, little pad, little piano kind of tone. Tape Echo is like all over everything. We love Tape Echo. There is 2600 uh, yeah. doing a lot of sound effects. The day that he bought that synthesizer, he brought it over to my house, like let's make a big drum sound. So we did that and then we had that recording way before Stranger Things was happening. And then it ended up making it into the score and we ended up recreating it to, to make it fit with the yeah. scene. But it's funny that literally the first thing ever recorded once he bought that made it into the soundtrack. The monster, like the upside down. That was actually just sequenced on um, there. On one of these, like, step sequencers, the notes are weird because it's analog so you can fine-tune, like, sim be between notes. It's kind of hard Stuff to you couldn't play on the keys because the tuning is microtonal. I don't understand. Hiding. This one has this uh, piece of tape on it because that had the monster theme on it. I was scared to change the knobs, so I put this piece of tape on it and it didn't touch it for, like, a year. <laughs> <laughs> Which sucks because it's a really good thing to use. Because I want to use it. It's a really good thing to use. When scary things are happening, there's like kind of like a big, bwomp, like a big kind of tuba sounding hit, and that's the 2600. If you're making music or doing any kind of art or whatever, and you're enjoying it, just keep doing it. Because we were in a band for like 10 years. We didn't expect anything to happen. We were gonna keep, keep making music anyway because we like doing it. And then one day we got this random email that changed our lives completely. So if you like something and it makes you happy, somebody else probably does too, they just need to find it.